Uh, as you all know, uh, five years ago, or even less, five years ago, the, uh, we were having this kind of very powerful professional channel, SolidWorks channel, it's cellular network, extremely efficient. And we were having a huge dependency on IBM for the rest of the business. This is not the case anymore. We manage both with Jeff, the professional channel of the home. Uh, there is now a PLM channel, not managed by IBM, it's managed by Dassault System. And then for large account, IBM is a partner. But IBM is a partner with a territory on a certain mission. So the profile of Dassault System when it comes to uh, distribution has completely changed, which fits very well with the model we've been building for 13 years. Uh, and last but not least, on the R&D for, uh, it's not new that uh, a lot of things have been exchanged in terms of basic ideas on technology, as, uh, as Jeff explained with the metaphor of uh, BMW and Mini with uh, shared components and things, and this will accelerate because it's really global r and now. Uh, it's global r and however, each of the brands have the power, each of the brands, not only SolidWorks, but Katia or Belnia or Novia have the power to decide which kind of products or user experience they want to provide to the users or, or consumers when it comes to Sweden. Okay, next question. Come on. Thank you. Devin Soul, Devin Soul's blog. Can you please expand upon any plans or ideas that you have that end users can communicate uh, easily uh, some ideas or concerns with SolidWorks? What do you mean by ideas or concerns? Um, well, as, as a user for about nine years, um, Sometimes I worry when I hear about 700,000 users, maybe going to a million, um, you know, am I going to be lost in the shuffle? And I would just like to know if there's any, any plans or any ideas that we can just communicate and, and continue this relationship that we have, which is fantastic, in, into the future. Yeah, it's a very fair question. There's, there's two ways I would answer it. One is mechanical and one is cultural. There has to be... We were getting confused. We were, we were taking in so many data points. Uh, we have a lot of good friends who have grown up with us who have, who have complete access to everyone in the company. And, uh, and all sorts of ways of gathering information. That we were really at risk of sending a, a confusing message to the R&D team on what things we should work on and what we should stop working on. And so that's why about a year and a half ago, we put more structure around the ways we gather data. I mean, we've grown up in this business. We've seen great companies die because they became so obsessed with one customer and their mandates that they ended up taking their eyes off the rest of the, of the I, market. I have three numbers. Yeah. Canon on computer vision. There you go. Perfect examples. Where So that's very dangerous. Likewise, it's very dangerous just to take in the collection of, of noise and try to make some kind of, of, of rational thinking from that. So there's a mechanical aspect, which is a discipline and structure. You, you saw my chart that had all the, the eight points of, of data capture, and I didn't go in detail because I think I put you to sleep. Uh, I put myself to sleep. But there, there's a lot there, and, and anyone here on the team can go into details on how we're doing that to improve that. So that's a mechanical thing. The other thing is, is cultural. Um, you know, when John, again, I'll, I'll invoke John. By the way, John keeps forgetting that the world is round. My phone rang at 12.30 this morning. It was John Hershey with about 700 ideas that he wanted to share with me. It's like, okay, John. I said, Jeff, you're so quiet. I'm, I'm in Barcelona. Oh, oh yeah, Dad. Oh, yeah. 